hey y'all, today I'm gonna talk about curriculum and more specifically, math curriculum. That's one of the first things everybody looks to when you're looking at curriculum and you're thinking about homeschooling is what about math? Math is scary because it's the one subject that you don't want your kid to fall behind. It, in a lot of cases, is the one subject that we weren't strong in in school, and so we feel inadequate and unable to teach math. If I barely pass math, how am I gonna teach my kid? That's me. And what if I, what if I can't help them? What if I can't teach them? So give me a thumbs up if you are anxious about math curriculums and choosing the right one. And be sure to go watch my video about choosing the right curriculum or the best curriculum. I'm going to go through all of those fears and all of those concerns. And I'm also going to talk specifically about a couple of math curriculums that we have used in the past, what we liked and what we didn't like about each one. The first one I'm going to talk about is Singapore math. That is what we used at the very beginning. I chose My Father's World for my son when he was, I think it was K-4. It does not have a math component to it. So I researched and I went to curriculum fairs and I don't think there's many of those, especially in light of right now what's going on, but I was able to get my hands on them and look at them, which was huge. That helped me so much in the beginning. And I know a lot of you don't have that luxury right now. Some of you may have friends that have homeschooled before or other family members or co-op members that you can go look and touch and feel like, hey, you Saxon, can I take a look at that? You can just kind of browse through. It's nice when it's all together and the options are all in one big building. It's also very overwhelming that way. So when you're talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody, hey, I use this, this is what I like about it, this is what I don't, that helps you sift through when you're sitting at the computer overwhelmed with all of the options. I chose Singapore math to go with my father's world when they were very little. It was only my son that I was teaching at the time and we really liked it. It worked well for him. Uh, his brain is wired for middle math. It comes with a teacher's guide, a home instructor's guide, a textbook, a workbook, and a test book. You don't have to do all of them. A lot of times if we went over the lesson in the textbook and he got it and we know it and we can just move on, we may skip the workbook and go to the test. The test has for each lesson two types. One is multiple choice and one is fill in the blank. I would maybe grab a multiple choice test real quick and make sure that he knew it. And then if he did, we moved on. If not, maybe we go back to the workbook go do a worksheet and then go do the fill in the blank test to make sure that he had it. I typically didn't have to go any further than that. Once we went through all of those steps, then he usually had the concept by then. He picked it up pretty quickly. And the instructor's guide almost gave you a script, not quite, but it went over everything, the summary and kind of what to teach and what to make notes on and what points to make. For those of you who think that you are not good at math and you're worried if you can possibly teach teach your child? Well, it depends on your skill and your confidence. Mine is at about fifth grade. Right there, I'm out. When my son entered fifth grade math, it wasn't quite so easy breezy for him. It wasn't quite so easy breezy for me. Singapore math is a, a rigorous program. It is common core, but I was able to follow along in those early education years. But once we got to fifth grade, then I had to rely on my husband, who is where he got his math brain from. And we would have to text him at work and go, hey, what's this problem? I can't quite figure out how to teach that to him. Or we would wait till dad came home in the evenings and something that we were struggling with, he would be able to go over and easily teach that to them because that's one of his strengths. After we struggled through the second part of fifth grade and my confidence was dwindling that I can't do this like the whole time, we looked into alternate uh, curriculums. I'm looking for a curriculum that can teach more effectively than I can. We came across BJU Press. Oh, let me backtrack. My daughter was struggling in fourth grade. And although I was able to help her and guide her through that grade, it was a struggle for her. That was the year that I realized that she needed something different. Her learning style is different than my son. I did a little bit more research and came across teaching textbooks. This seemed like the answer. It wasn't mom 
and her at the table crying together. This was the computer screen and it taught it in a really fun, cool way. I love, love, love the platform of teaching textbooks. The kids get on there, they do it independently, they're able to watch the lesson and then they do the work. This was a couple of years ago before they did the subscription-based uh, program. So this was with the CDs, but they were able to have the CD loaded on their computer. And so she's able to enter those answers into the computer. And then it sends the parent platform every single question that she got wrong, what she got right, where she has something that she really didn't get or what she missed. And then it also gives them the option to see if they got something wrong, what they missed and how to fix it. And then it shows me if they looked at that. If she got a poor grade on a lesson, on a quiz or on a test, and I look at it and say, hey, you got these wrong, but she looked over them and it will show me that it was checked or not. It will show me that she looked over and figured out why she got them wrong. Then I can resubmit the test to her, go over the lesson or whatever the next step is. I can also look and see that she didn't even look to see why she got it wrong. That's the first thing she has to do. So we have to go back and do that and then move forward until she gets it. Teaching textbooks, we liked, she really liked, she enjoyed, it's very colorful, fun. There's like cartoon characters and cool stuff. But I found out at the end of the year that we were behind. With Singapore math being so rigorous, we were probably a grade level behind where I expected us to be. Behind is all relative for each kid. But as far as my goals and our plans, it was not moving her forward as fast as I was hoping that it would. Maybe if you stick with teaching textbooks, there might be a difference. It may all come together after a couple of years. I know I read somewhere that it all just kind of clicks like till pre-calculus. I wasn't willing to risk that kind of time to see if it worked or not long-term. So we bailed on teaching textbooks after the first year and we went to Matthew C. This is very visual, hands-on. I was just trying to figure out what her learning style was and how can we reach her. And we played the videos. I think I moved all three kids to Matthew C when we did that so we could do that as a family. It didn't take long for all three kids to be bored. Matthew C teaches to mastery and they didn't love the hands-on blocks as much as I thought they would. They were more interested in making, you know, houses and using them like Legos as opposed to using them as manipulatives for the curriculum as they were intended. So when something teaches to mastery, it goes over and over and over and over until you get it, until you get it in your sleep. So that is one learning style and it works well, but it did not work well for our family. My kids were bored. I was kind of tired of looking at it and seeing it. We do much better with a spiral curriculum. That's where it teaches something and then it reviews something that you've learned before and then it comes back and it reviews it in more detail and more comprehensively and then it goes to something else and then it circles back into a review. So you're learning something new but you're always reviewing something maybe a cumulative review, maybe a chapter review, but it always circles back so that they don't lose that skill. We prefer a spiral curriculum over mastery programs, and I think that's why Matthew C did not work for us. Now, I will say we have used these curriculums and they didn't work for us. The workbooks that we've written in, those are consumables, and that's just the cost that I was willing to risk to, uh, to try something out there. But the home instructor's guides and the books that we didn't use, I bought ahead a couple of years in Singapore because we had used it for so many years. When I found a good deal, I'd grab a couple of grades at one time. Well, we switched to BJU and I still had two or three grades worth of Singapore math like new sitting there on my shelf. They do have a high resale value. They hold their value well. So I was able to recoup some of that money for something that we didn't use and move on to something else. Same thing with Matthew C. It does hold its value. It has a high resale value. You'll be able to sell those blocks in a second and you'll be able to find the CDs used or sell them used online. There's plenty, plenty of options. Same thing with teaching textbooks. At the time when I was using teaching textbooks, we were using the CDs and they resold very well. Now that there's a subscription, it's a little bit more cost effective to use it, but then you obviously can't resell a subscription. So I'm not sure how that would quite work, but I'm definitely not sorry that I gave it a try and that we experienced that. With teaching textbooks, we did have a success story. My niece came to live with us for about nine months a couple of years ago, and she was struggling through geometry. 
She was on a remedial level at that time. Teaching textbooks gave her the confidence, taught it in a very clear and easy way to understand, and she did better with that curriculum than she would have with any other. We used two other different ones with her. They were just too hard, too complicated. And by the end of teaching textbooks, she understood geometry and her grades were coming up. So there is a time and a place and a family and a child and a student and a teacher for each of these curriculums. These are just my experiences with those specific specific math curriculums. BJU is our jam. That is what we're using right now. That's what we're using as a box curriculum set. We are using that for everything with the exception of science and history this year, and it's going really well for us. The kids watch an online teacher with a streamed lesson. So they watch the lecture, then they go to their workbook and they do their independent work. And then if they have any issues, they can call mom over for help. Or at the end of the day, I go over and check and see if there's any, whoa, you missed a lot of that, let's go over that and see. And a lot of times by that time, dad's home and he can help. If not, if you don't have a dad that can help, if you don't have uh, someone in your family with strong math skills and you're still trying to teach this and you're worried if you can help your child or not, there is available help out there. BJU has an extra, I think it's a site. We haven't used it yet, but it's homework or something like that. I should probably check into that. Maybe I'll put the information right here. When my child doesn't understand something specifically in math and then I try to go over it with them, they still don't get it and we need some reinforcement. Sometimes we can go back and watch the lesson together and that will help answer how they went about it, how they were just taught and what they're looking for. There's also Khan Academy, which we have used and just type in long division, exponents, um, square roots, whatever it is, and there will be videos, lessons, extra practice that you can look up and work that way. So it doesn't have to be all on you. There's numerous other programs that are completely free out there that will help give you a lesson specifically on something that you're struggling with so that you can use kind of an online tutor in that way and get through to the next lesson where everybody understands and is happy and no tears. For our math, we do math first thing in the morning. It's when the kids are most alert and sharp, and that's the first subject that we start with each morning. That has not always been the case. A couple of years ago, we, for whatever reason, math kind of shuffled down to last, where we would do maybe English first or spelling, or I don't remember what we were doing first and what the specific reason was, or if there was a reason. Math fell kind of last for us, and a lot of times we'd have to leave the house. Our day would get cut short. We had to go grocery shopping. There was a birthday party. Somebody had practice. Something came up to interrupt our day, and math just didn't get done. And so we struggled with math that year, and I think that's the number one reason why is because because it wasn't on the list of importance. It just kind of got shuffled to the end and we didn't always get to it. Well, if you don't do it, then like, yeah. If you don't do the lesson, then it's really hard to learn the material. So now we do math first, and that's with all three kids. They have math first thing in the morning. The rest of their subjects are in differing orders. Depending on each kid, I try to put something that they're looking forward to that they like. Maybe it's Bible, maybe it's history, and intersperse and put those in between the other ones that have to get done. Typically nowadays, we get all of our work done and we schedule and manage our days accordingly. But if we don't get that last subject done or the last two subjects done, is the world gonna end? Is it gonna be okay? Okay, yes, it's going to be just fine. We can make it up or maybe it's something that we could just skip all together and that's fine. That's why I have different orders for each subject for each kid. For example, one of my children is struggling in spelling and his spelling is bumped up a little bit because that's important for him to get to that subject to do that when it's early and when he's fresh. And my daughter who is in sixth grade, she's really great at spelling. That's kind of lower down on the list for her because she's good at it. It's sixth grade. It's her last year in spelling anyway. She's got it. And I hate to say the least important, but the least important for her right now. That is my review on math curriculums and what we have had experience with and what we have used in the past. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you a little bit more insight. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have further about math or anything homeschool related actually. So make sure you subscribe to see more homeschooling videos like this and I will see y'all later. Bye-bye.